Hello, everyone. My name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. Before we begin, I would just like to give you a suggestion for something you can do in the current situation we find ourselves in. In light of the current blatant racism and the death of George Floyd, as well as others, I donated to the NAACP's Legal Defense Fund, known as LDF. Uh, You can choose what you want to donate your money toward. Uh, They have a list. And I donated mine to uh, police reform. Um, The Legal Defense Fund is fighting for the rights of black Americans and all Americans. Let me be clear, all Americans to enjoy equality and safety in this great country of ours. So that's one suggestion to donate to the LDF, the NAACP, as something that you can go out and actually do in light of our current situation. Okay, that being said, let's get to today's episode. Today we're going to talk about three characters, one from each Star Wars trilogy, that are part of the minor characters that populate the Star Wars galaxy. Let us begin with the original trilogy. And the original trilogy character we're going to discuss is Logre, the Ewok medicine man. In Bright Tree Village, which our rebel friends find themselves in, in in Return of the Jedi, the village is ruled by the wise Chief Chirpa. Chief Chirpa's right-hand man is the medicine man, Mogre, who you might recognize as the Ewok who wears the bird skull on his head. Now, Mogre Despite being only second in command, sure acts like he's number one. As evidenced in the scene where C-3PO, who has been mistaken, or rather taken as a deity by the Ewoks, is basically ordering the Ewoks to let Han, Chewie, and Luke go. Uh, when they're about to be roasted alive. You'd think that a command from their god would get the Ewoks to obey. But nope. Logray's like, nah, screw that. And Logray's like, nah, we're going to keep going. So Logray's kind of full of himself. And uh, it's an interesting bit of Ewok politics that the guy who's second in command is acting like he's number one. I think Chief Chirpa seems pretty content just to sit around and let Logre run the show. So it would seem that the position of medicine man or shaman in the Ewok hierarchy is an extremely important position as a lot of power seems to come with it. Logre, I find to be an interesting fellow just in how full of himself he is and how much power and respect he commands in the 
hierarchy of Ewoks. He also uh, he also officiates at the ceremony in which our heroes are made members of the tribe. And so, admittedly, that's kind of a pain that he is. Once Logre is convinced to let our heroes go, he becomes a pretty good guy. In fact, if I remember correctly, he was actually present uh, at the Battle of Endor, which is uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, it's it would seem that Chief Chirpa did not appear, but it was probably wise that he did not. Because he probably needed to be uh, kept safe. So a special uh, shout out to Mike Edmonds, who played the Ray, for doing a good job. And breathing life into this heroic... Because truly he was heroic, but this kind of heroic yet full of himself character. But Logre really fascinates me in the Ewok politics. If you can call it that, it's actually kind of cool. So those are my thoughts on Logre, the Ewok medicine man. Okay, now we're going to jump to the prequel trilogy. And the side character I've chosen, or minor character, is C.O. Bibble. Ah, who is C.O. Bibble, you may ask? C.O. Bibble is Queen Amidala's uh, advisor, who later advised several other queens of Nebu. Uh, Bivol is, I think it's uncertain in the movies, at least a lot, it's never, it is never said aloud what his actual position is. That he's an important advisor. Now, first, he was present. Uh, during the invasion of Naboo uh, and was with the queen and was the one who really felt that they were going to be invaded. In fact, very wisely, he's the one who says a communication disruption can mean only one thing, invasion. Now, we may look at that line and go, that, well, that's not the only thing it could mean. But, um, you know, but I think that he hit the nail on the head. Because he knew what it would mean. Now, he did not travel with the queen when she escaped Naboo. Uh, he stayed behind to speak for the people of Naboo. fighting back against the rule of Newt Gunray, the Viceroy, as much as Bivol was able to, given the circumstances. Now, he was kind of forced into uh, 
sending a message. Uh, it's not entirely clear. But a message was sent to Queen Amadella's starship that appeared to show CL Bibble saying, you have to contact me. Now, it was Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon who realized that that was a fake. But whether CL Bibble was being forced to say that or was it, it was a completely doctored hologram, uh, from the ground up, we don't really know. And uh, yep, CL Bibble stayed stayed the course and stayed there through the entire crisis and was there at the victory parade at the end, celebrating the liberation of Naboo. Now, he stayed on as an important advisor in the Naboo hierarchy. And the was there 10 years later when Anakin Skywalker escorted then-Senator Amidala to the court of Naboo in which C.O. Bibble expressed extreme uh, anger. Well, maybe not extreme, but expressed anger at the fact that Newt Gunray was still in position as the Viceroy of the Trade Federation. After four trials in the Supreme Court, of, of the Republic. So, he was pretty upset about that. And, but thankfully, really was stalwart defender of democracy. Uh, and then, of course, he was still present later when Queen Amidala was laid to rest after her death as seen in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, C.L. Bibble was played by the wonderful Oliver Ford Davies, a great British character actor who has appeared in quite a few movies, actually. He was on Game of Thrones, oddly enough. He was on, in the movie, uh, Mrs. Brown, with Judy Dench, which I highly recommend. And the character really brings a lot of flavor, and is often overlooked, but is really a stalwart defender of... Peace and justice on Naboo and defender of peace and justice in the Republic as a whole. Okay, so those are my thoughts on CL Bibble. All right, we are going to take a short break to hear from our sponsor, and when we come back, we're going to discuss a minor character from the sequel trilogy. See you in a moment. Hello there, this is Brennan Marr, host of Page Turners They Were Not, a Star Wars podcast. And I'm here to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the best way to make a podcast. Why is that? Well, first off, it's free. Yes, you heard me right. Anchor is free. Anchor has all the tools you need to make a podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you on various platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcast. You can make money from your podcast. And get this, 
with no minimum listenership. That means you can make money even if no one listens to your podcast. That, of course, is not ideal, as Anchor will allow you to spread your podcast. Bring in more viewers, and you can make more money because of it. Everything you need to make a podcast is in one place on Anchor. If you're interested, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you, and may the force be with you. Okay, we are back. So the final character we're going to discuss is from the sequel trilogy, and that is Larma de Aci. Larma de Aci was an important figure in the resistance. And she first appeared in The Last Jedi, and then later appeared in The Rise of Skywalker. And her position I'm not exactly sure what her actual position was. I think it might have been Commander. But she was present during the evacuation of Dakar. When the, with the resistance fleeing on the Mon Calamari cruiser. Now she was there also when the attack on the ship occurred and Leia was blown out into space. Several others of the Resistance Command were sucked out into space and they died. Including Admiral Ackbar, sadly. But Leia, with the power of the Force, was able to survive and return to the ship. Though it took a terrible toll on her health, which eventually led to her death. Commander Daisy was there to inform the gathered resistance members that Leia was was recovering. But also had to inform them that with Admiral Akbar's death and many of the other leaders. that uh, the leadership of the resistance for the time fell to Vice Admiral Holdo. Um, now, Commander Daisy saw the sparks fly between or saw, not sparks, but uh, friction between uh, Poe Dameron and Admiral Holdo, and Daisy tried desperately and to keep the peace, but to little avail. Until, of course, Leia reawoke from her coma and gave Poe a much needed uh, blast on stun. <laughs> as Paul was kind of being an idiot during the whole situation. Now, Commander Daisy was aware of the idea, what the plan was. Admiral Holdo had a plan, she just didn't tell Paul. And, and that's a whole other debate right there, but Commander Daisy... Um, knew where they were going. The ship was attempting to get to Crate, where an old rebel base had the capacity 
to send a signal to the Outer Rim and the Allies of the Resistance. Didn't quite work out that way, but thankfully Commander Daisy was one of the survivors of the Battle of Crate. And all the members of the Resistance gathered on the Falcon and escaped. Thanks to some timely intervention by Luke Skywalker. Commander AC continued with the Resistance and is present a year later during all the events of the Resistance Final Strike on the Final Order, as it was called. In fact, Commander Daisy was the one who sadly had to inform Poe and Finn and Chewbacca, sadly, that Maya had passed away. Well, Commander Daisy was a very stalwart soldier who stayed the course and kept her cool even when things were going nuts around her. Holdo, or Holdo, De Acey was played by British stage actress Amanda Lawrence. She gives a very nice performance. As his wonderfully resolute character. So those three characters. Low Gray, Seal Bibble, and Larma De Acey are three minor characters that populate the Star Wars galaxy that create um, flavor in this galaxy far, far away. As I've mentioned before, the minor characters in Star Wars are great because they give the fans other characters that they can latch onto besides just the main characters. And a lot of minor characters are aliens and other strange-looking characters that we see, and we want to know what this... We see them, and we want to know what their story is, where they come from, what they're all about. And so, those are three minor characters that stand out to me. Let me know the minor characters that stand out to you. My name is Brendan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turn As They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you.